That's better. But does it look nice? It looks lovely. Hats don't really suit me generally. I'm sure this one does, though. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson, Richard James and Chris Dale. Birthday to us. Yeah, that's it. It's pod yeah. three hundred. Happy. It's not really a birthday though, is it? Because birthdays are years. It's a pod podversary. Happy podversary. Hang Happy on. podversary to but... you. Slightly <laughs> disappointed. A bit limp. I tell you what else is disappointing. <laughs> okay, what? Actually, it's not disappointing because it's a pleasure to be at the Moxie here in Snarl. It is as always. But we did have plans that went slightly awry. Mm, but we, did. we hinted at in the weeks preceding. Yeah, uh, this sorry. Week's we we were going to be in a very special top secret location. We were. We were. Um, yes. Yes. But might still happen. Um, yeah. But the best yeah. laid plans oh, of mice and all yeah, that. Yeah. Exactly. So. It's, what better way to celebrate our 300th podcast than to do it exactly the same way that we've done it the previous 299 times? Well, you say that. Yeah. But I, yeah. Jamie Anderson, co-host oh, yeah. of the Jerry Anderson podcast, yes. uh, will be presenting to you, Richard James, the co-host of the Jerry Anderson podcast, yeah. throughout the Jerry Anderson podcast, Pod 300, Yeah. something rather special that I've been working on all week. <laughs> Is it a cake? Well, we do have a cake, oh, but yeah. that's for after. Oh, OK, we great. A, we have a princess tiara cake. Mm, uh, no, I have... Um, well, let me set the stage. You know how much you love Fab Facts? Uh, yes. And you know how sometimes we learn new things, often from our podstrons, yes. or because we look something up and we learn yes. about the, the etymology of a, a word, perhaps. Yes. Or the, uh, the origins of a, a story that was inspired by something outside of the worlds of Anderson. Uh, yes. Well... To carry on the educational theme, <laughs> yeah. I have done some research and generated 300 facts about the number 300. Oh, what? Are there 300 facts about the number 300? We will be visiting all, many, many of them. Not all 300. No, because if I read them out end to end, it would be the whole podcast. But we'll be visiting I mean, many of them through this podcast. And two of them yes. are Anderson-related. Are they? <laughs> Yes. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So, so are I mean, you just going to sort of sprinkle them throughout, would, are you? Would you like one now? Oh, go on then. Yes, go on. Kick us off. Uh, 300 yeah. is a mathematically significant number, known as a Harshad number, which means that it's divisible by the sum of its digits in a given number base. That is 3 yeah. plus 0 plus 0 yeah. equals 3, yeah. and 300 divided by 3 is 100. What? Right. There aren't many Harshad numbers, oh, apparently. Not. No. Oh, but 300 is one of them. There you go. Incredible. Anyway... Right, I bet uh, you're glad you're watching now. Someone much more exciting than your old Harshad number is Chris Dale. Oh, there he is. Hi, Chris. Does he look festive? Hi, guys. <laughs> no, he looks the same as normal. Oh, yeah, he does. Oh, yeah, he does, doesn't Could he? Could have dressed up, Chris. Yeah, sorry, yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe he'll wear a special hat for the randomizer a bit later on. I would hope so, yes. That's when he sits down in front of a random Jerry Anderson episode and gives is us it? his thoughts and comments. Ooh. Would you like to know what else is coming up on this here 300th edition of the Jerry Anderson mm -hmm. podcast? Uh, yes, I We've would. We've got fab facts, oh, hang Jamie. On. Let me celebrate each item. All right. Accordingly. Please start again. Fat fact. <gasps> <laughs> uh, the voice of the Podstrons. <laughs> Most, especially for me in particular, I get the opportunity to interview our special guest this week, <gasps> UFO's Georgina Moon. <laughs> oh, that was very exciting. <laughs> yes, good. Oh, Georgina's so lovely. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to meeting her, She's yes. She's brilliant. Good. I hope she says... Checking boosters. Oh, I'll make her say it Please just for do. you. Great. Uh, did I mention the voice of the Podstrons? People who've been getting touch at podcast at jerryanderson.com <laughs> with their thoughts and comments, <laughs> which we will then read out. You don't have to do that every time I pause. I think that's I'm probably... I'm running out of puff. Good. Right. <laughs> have you, does that mean you haven't quite got enough puff for five facts? Uh, well, <clears throat> why don't we warm ourselves up with another fact about the number 300? Right. Uh... In DC Comics Facts, yes. there is a comic series named 300 by Frank Miller, <clears throat> which uh, is the basis for the 2006 film of the same name. Oh, yes, I know the film. OK, great. Yeah. Is that good? Are you enjoying these? Um, I, I enjoying is sort of overstating it, I think. OK, well, let's move on to the thing that is... Uh, what is it you said a few months oh, ago? let's just the, do Fab Facts. best thing, Come your favourite thing in your life. All right. Fab Facts. Now, time for this week's... Fab facts. To make up for my slightly limp 300 fact number two, but don't worry, there's another no. 298 <laughs> still to come. Great. Uh, it's fab facts, mm. a tradition which has not come with us for the whole 300 plus, no, but no. for a significant number. Do we know what number? 
No, Posterons? Maybe, do you, do maybe you know? 260, maybe? Well, 260? happy 260-ish like podiversary fab yeah. facts. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a book of fab facts. Yes. I'll flick through it. Yes. Uh, and uh, Richard will shout fab at a random point. That's and true. that'll stop me flicking. And yep. hopefully we'll find a fab fact in there. Maybe. All right, go on then. All right. Do well. Maybe it'll be 300 themes. Maybe By it chance. will. But no, I doubt it. Won't be. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Fab! <laughs> Here's a fab fact for you. Great. Uh, one of the most often asked Space 1999 questions, after what the hell's the deal with season two, of course, well, yes, yes. is hmm. why does the episode The Last Sunset clearly show that Moonbase Alpha, which you will recall, Richard, is uh, the base on the on moon. On the moon, that's right. Has windows that can be opened to let in the lovely fresh air <laughs> from <laughs> outside, fresh you know. Yeah, interesting. Uh, well, don't worry. I'm not. We Oh, I'm sorry, I played along. Oh, God. Don't oh, worry. Don't win- worry. What about the windows? You're, you're, thank you. I guess you're some of the finest actor in the Moxie. <laughs> uh, the, uh, we're going to explain that today. Okay, good. Okay? Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, this is the episode where capsules from the planet Ariel create an atmosphere on the moon. Ooh. Oh. Uh, in order to distract the Alphans from investigating their planet until the moon has passed out of range. I what a great see. plan. Isn't it? Yes. I'm sure they could Slightly have been easier. Yeah. Distraction, but there we go. <laughs> uh, in the episode, we see Koenig lowering a window in the technical section so he, Helena and Bergman can watch other Alphans playing outside. But why is that window able to open at all? Well, that's true. Why would you put an opening window on the moon base? Uh, brr, who knows? Well, oh. as written in film, the start of that scene featured technicians installing a new, a new window, window in right. the technical section right. to replace the one that was shown to shatter when the aerial probe vented its atmosphere throughout the base. I see. Yes, I see. So it's not so much Moonbase Alpha has windows that can be opened, but rather that this particular window and presumably yeah. any others that were damaged by the probe were replaced with ones that because could there was an be open. That's right. I see. Uh, yes, there we go. Yes. Remember that the Alphans are hoping that the Moon's new atmosphere is going to be permanent. So if you have to install new windows, why not put in ones that could be opened? That Absolutely. does make perfect sense. It does make sense. Uh, later in the episode, when the Alphans discover that there are corrosive elements in the new atmosphere. Uh, the script had Koenig uh, order uh, Carno to revert to Alpha's normal internal atmosphere and begin replacing all the new windows. <laughs> really? Gosh. Yes, I didn't realise <laughs> it was so, so glazing themed. Yes. Um, this sequence was also filmed, but both the installation of the windows and the order to remove them was cut from the final edit, oh. uh, leaving us with no on-screen explanation for why Alpha has an opening window. Yes, I see. Until now. Yes, that's good. Uh, Presumably these scenes were trimmed to reduce the length of the episode, perhaps with the 1999 team, assuming that most viewers would be able to work it out for themselves. But the fact that fans have been asking questions about it for the last five decades... Have they? Yes. The first I've heard. Yes, shows that perhaps uh, they may have been better leaving those bits in. Wow. I mean, I just get an image. You know, the moon is travelling at quite a speed, isn't it, in space 1999? It's being thrown away from the Earth's it, orbit. It, it must be travelling very fast. I get fast. the image of the atmosphere that's just now appeared on the moon. It's kind of whooshing past, so Bergman opens the window like a dog and just sits <laughs> his hair flowing like this and his tongue lolling down. You could definitely that's, yeah, see that's the image that. I have. Yes. Good. I'd never thought of... Yeah. But what breed of uh, dog would oh, he'd be a red Bergman setter. be? Would he? Of course he would. OK, I mean, sorry, this is completely unrelated. No, uh, no, no, this is what we're here for. But uh, And Koenig, I think, would be more of a Dalmatian. Uh, Dr Russell? Poodle. Really? Yeah. OK. Like one of those that's kind of shaved, or remember. Interesting. You know, like that, pom-poms. And uh, Alan Carter? Alan Carter. Oh, a retriever. You think? Oh, sure. Ah, interesting. I mean, Podstrons. Yes. You know the email address. Podcast at jerryanderson.com with <laughs> the subject know. line Alpha Dogs. <laughs> yes. I know, it's not that. No, that's uh, good. I like whatever it. you want. But yes, if you could cast <laughs> the, in the entirety of Space 1999 with different dog breeds, yeah. then what would you go for? Yeah. And why? Yeah. Sorry, that, I, I feel this is, I've gone completely <laughs> off track. But No, I like it. Uh, I like it. Yeah. I like, that's a whole new premise, isn't it? There's a colony of dogs on the moon as it gets blasted blast away from the Earth's orbit. Yes. And over time, maybe they sort of gain intelligence and you know, would the first episode be called Bark Away? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <gasps> yeah, we should have these every week. We should. Yeah. Anyway, well, like what it. a shame that they cut the window scenes out, but I can imagine that oh, a yes, bit of sort too. of glazing-related stuff. I mean, I'm glazing over just thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, all right, fair enough. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'll be able to help with more of that with <sighs> some further 300 facts of after course. this fan fact. But Great. for now, yes. that brings us very tightly to the end of this week's <gasps> Window, window Facts. Fact.
Yeah, I mean, slightly disappointing that we couldn't come up with uh, you know something a little more uh, window is perfectly window good. Back. And also, we inserted the whole bit about the dogs. About the dogs. Spark away! Come on, D- that was very good. Yeah, any other canine titles you can think of? Oh. Email us podcast jerryanson.com. Oh, I should say, put them on the Facebook group as well. Oh. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podstrons. Yes. Now the podstrons are the sort of people who love a good old fact like that one. So shall we end up have another fact about the number three hundred? I mean, it's going to happen. Whatever I say. Uh, oh well, this is quite fun in chess. There are over 300 billion different positions of the pieces that come after just four moves each by both the black and white pieces in a game. 300 billion, you know, arrangements Mm. of... Isn't that amazing? So it's time now here on the Jerry Amster podcast for this week's special (laughs) guest. Go on, off you pop, off you pop. This week's guest was a staple of 70s and 80s British TV and film, with credits including Up Pompeii, You're Only Young Twice, How's Your Father, Carry On Camping, Bless This House and Carry On Behind. She's also met Doctor Who on audio, but is perhaps best known to us as Lieutenant Sylvia Howell in UFO. It's Georgina Moon! Checking boosters. Well... What a treat to have you on the Jerry Anderson podcast, Georgina. That's a nice thing to say. Well, not so. Thank you so much for joining us. Did you enjoy your lunch? I certainly did. Did that make and it worth coming? Yes, I feel very relaxed now. <laughs> a lovely glass of Japanese wine. I yeah, think. that's right. It was. Yes, Japanese wine. Exactly. Um, so thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk to you about a, a, a whole host of things from your illustrious career because you really were there. You did it. You even bought the T-shirt. Yes. Worked with lots of names in the 70s and 80s that would be very familiar to, to lots of our yes, audience. Yes, yes, Is there one standout thing you can point to, do you think, that perhaps you're most proud of or you feel would sum up your career? Oh, my goodness mm, me. And it's quite a question, isn't it? It is. And I don't think... I... I... <laughs> No, I don't think there is. I'll be. I, I mean, I. You know, I've always just worked in light entertainment. Which yeah. Is really, really. Yeah. You know, the few serious plays I did, but not. You know. And so, what would you so, count as light entertainment? Explain that well, phrase to me. How does I that? I did a lot of farce ah, on stage, yeah. obviously, and all. It seems the TV programs one did was. All light entertainment. Yes. Uh, lots of sitcoms I see from your yes. illustrious CV. Yes. But there's a yes. skill That's there. True. I hope you're not uh, oh. putting yourself down because comedy yeah. is an absolute art, isn't well, it? Well, yes, yes. And especially on TV because you, you know, it's not the same as comedy on stage, which you sort yeah. of can work out yourself while you're doing it. Yes, that's true. And, of course, you get that immediate response from the yes, audience, exactly, exactly, which you don't get exactly. in the studio, Not potentially. In the same way. No, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. Uh, so we're going to be talking to you about many things from your career, but also, of course, we have to talk about UFO. Mm. Yes, definitely. Uh, which, over 50 years ago now, mm. we've realised. Yes. That how easily do the memories come? Fairly easily. Yeah. Fairly easily. Yeah. But uh, uh, it is strange. I mean, uh, we've been saying... You, you, it's been. They were jobs. They were. They yeah. were. But UFO was my very one. Of my I think second job right. really in that kind of work, uh, and so um, the memories do fade a little bit. But yeah. UFO I can remember fairly well. And and the strength thing was when I was being thought about doing UFO. I was asked about it. Um, I was working. In Elstree with a man called Liberace, <laughs> which is rather wonderful, <laughs> and that was that really was my sort of first yeah. little major thing, ah. uh, which was very interesting. And then suddenly I then got UFO, yes, so it was sort of interesting contrast. There. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and and formative times in a young actor's career. Oh, then very I would much think. so. But how familiar were you with the the worlds of Jerry Anderson at that point? Well. Not knowing it at the time, obviously. Um, I certainly remember the children's series he uh, did in the 50s. Yeah, obviously. really. It was. Um, yeah. <clears throat> very much so. And so uh, extraordinary that I know I remember that very well. And UFO, of course, was his first live action series. It was, wasn't it? Proper yes, live with, action. With, with humans. With real, actual, <laughs> proper humans. Yes. Was there a sense, do you remember at all, that this was something of a step up or a gear change for Jerry and Sylvia at that time? I would have thought so. Yeah. Because of only, as far as I know, it was the first time they used humans. As yeah, yeah. I, 
I guess we, we all looked a bit like the puppets, <laughs> our hair and all those wonderful ladies that wore the mauve yes. wigs and things. We That's are right. we, we were we're looking a bit like the uh, yes. puppets, I feel, you know. Which would which have been at the hands of, of Sylvia, I guess. Sylvia and all those wonderful costumes. That's yes. right, exactly. From puppets to yeah. humans. There was a strange hybrid series called The Secret Service. Oh, right. Which was no, part puppets and part... Stanley Unwin, in fact. Oh, really? The man mm. with the funny... The Unwinese. Yes. The language, that's right, yeah. How wonderful. Yes, uh, and then UFO, that. as you say, the first proper sort of live-action series. Oh, right. Yeah, no, right. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, let's see what else you don't know, because when we <laughs> strap our guests down to the chair, we like to test them on their Jerry Addison oh, knowledge. Uh, so we're going to show you some really very quick clips oh, from God. every one of Jerry's 18 series. 18 series. Yeah. I think we're going to go sure. right back to 57, I think, oh, to the early. Yeah. Mm, and all the way up to 2005, I think, with oh, Captain yeah. Scarlet. So we'll, we're going to show you some of these clips. When you see one that you recognise, shout it out. All right. And we'll see how well you do. Okay. Ready for this? Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> the Adventures of... Yes. Twizzle. Yeah, well done. Oh, That's God. a good start. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's a fireball like no not too quite soon, too, oh that's the four feather good falls, yes 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 um super car yes oh, that's right yes. i'm surprising myself oh that lovely song i missed it that was oh that's uh, thunderbirds is it not quite not quite oh, it's very no. quick i know i've lost that's thunderbirds exactly that's thunderbirds oh golly No, I'm not sure. Yeah, fair enough. And I'm... Oh, is that... No, no, it's too quick. quick. It's all too quick. This is the strange oh, Stanley Unwin well, program. Well, this I didn't know. That's right. That I didn't know about. But this could be UFO. There you go. Good. Thank you. That's wonderful. Oh. And now, oh, Robert Vaughan. Gosh, yes, Robert Vaughan in... No, I'm not sure. That's all right. Now, we're heading into the 80s now. Oh. Is that te 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 yes. beginning with a T? Yes. 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 Good. Hawks. I'm going to give you that one, Terror Hawks. Yeah. <laughs> no, not quite sure of this one. Just no. a couple more. No, I don't know. That's all right. And finally. And finally. No, no. I'm not sure. That's all no, right. So. That's all right. <laughs> Georgina, I mean, I think you might be surprised. Oh, what? I mean, there's a lot of series there, of course. Yes. The, and That one I missed... The, Black and white one. Yes. Oh, what was, uh, was There was Supercar. There Supercar. was Fireball XR5. Oh, that's the one I That was the said. song. Oh, that I think you knew that. Yes, I did. It and Torchy at the very beginning, Tor after Tor Twizzle. I'm going to give you seven there. Oh, that's You right. actually scored, that's... You scored six, but I think oh, there was an, yeah, at least another one six, bubbling six under there, wasn't there? There were. So it hadn't been so quick. <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> we don't make it easy, do we? I know that. So look, there's your seven. Oh, goodness, that's good. Which is very good. I mean, you know, we've had people on twos and threes. We've had people on 17s and 18s. Teams, but that's a good middling strong score, yes. I would say. Thank you. Not bad at all. So nice. for now, there you go. Um, so you were quite good on the earlier ones, Twizzle, Torchy, Four Feather Falls. You, you got yes, quite, yes, quite I remember good. That. So and were these the, the kind of programs you were watching as a child? Well, yes, they were very much so. Along with even further back, which I loved, was nothing to do with Jerry Anderson. Yeah. Was the wooden tops? The wooden tops. The wooden tops. And yes. Talking of as we had been talking about children's, pro yeah. they were so sweet. These yeah. they were very gentle programs in those days, and even with um, four feather falls mm -hmm. and things, and, mm -hmm. but torchy, they're very gentle, yeah. nice things. Yes. Then. Sometimes not a lot happens. Probably not. Maybe. But but the, but the point in a way was to nice yes to make create comforting worlds yes, I suppose yes, for children. Yes, very gentle. Yeah. And you say it's nothing to do with Jerry Anderson actually. Well, oh wooden, yes, I meant the know. wooden tops of course. You know the marionettes oh, yes, and so on. Yes, it's yes, all no, part I didn't of mean that. that. I meant no, no. he he yeah, yeah. carried on that Absolutely. gentleness, you know, yeah, of, right. of up until a certain point when you obviously children's TV now has seems yeah. to have changed. Yeah, a lot. yeah, that's true. A bit more innocent than. Like, yes, I think so. We stayed. Slightly innocent. But it's interesting <laughs> charting Jerry's career, of which, of course, inescapably, you are part. Yes, you know, I we know start with the innocence of things like yes. Twizzle and Torchy and so yes. on. But then we hit the 70s and it's all UFO and Space 1999 yes, yes, yes. and organ harvests yes. and, uh, you know, yes. alien creatures. And, and suddenly that it's like it's like the audience grew up yes. with the Jerry Anderson shows. Yes, yes, exactly. Out of that yes, sort yes, of time no, of innocence true. into something darker. Wonderful with Jerry when I did UFO and I 
I can I really can remember, fun enough, it must have been one of the first days, that um, a nice gentleman came up to me and said, hello, I'm Bob Bell, and and I went to school with his son, huh. Nicholas, which was really lovely. Right, yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't so long before. Really. Yes, yes. And I didn't know he was an art director. Uh, and that was nice. And then also I remember Ed Bishop coming up to me and saying, it's nice you're here, and I've just had a daughter, and I hope I've got this right, but she was christened Georgina, which is was nice. Yeah. And of course, I met P- Peter Gordino, who I was a bit in awe of because I started off as a dancer, and right. I, you know, he was one of the dancers ah, at that time. And yeah. so all these suddenly, out of the blue, I met quite a few people on the first day of rehearsals that had a meaning. Which How was funny, nice. isn't that amazing, and yeah. I remember that very well. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. And you were mentioning earlier that you had a certain connection with a, a, a previous guest on the podcast, Aisha Bruff, that yes. you only recently discovered. Absolutely, because we met at a, um, a convention quite a few years ago now and it was, and then discovered we, we went to school together, yes, which yeah. was bizarre, slightly at different times. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that was strange yes yes, yes. coincidence nice it's interesting you mentioned the light entertainment is the phrase as, as where you found a lot of your work and uh Aisha started I think as a dancer yes I believe she did and also had something and of a singing career so as well so, yeah. so yes, it seems yes, like it was exactly. that was more of an accepted route into tv well, well, yes well maybe I mean it was a route for me to get my equity card, I started off as a dancer mm-hmm. in shows, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> as a chorus line in uh, pantomimes yes. and sort of occasional, they had in those days, summer seasons. And I did a couple of strange summer seasons Great. in places like Clacton and yeah. Worthing or something <laughs> yeah, as a dancer. And sort of, that's uh, yeah, so started off in that sort of way too, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I understand it was something in the in the blood as well, though. Your father was an actor? Yes. Yes. So was George Moon, yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and my you... grandparents, too. Oh, really? Mm, yes, because they they, they, uh, they, were, they were all based in London. I mean, my, uh, but um, they went off when my father, I think, was about four or five, off to Australia. And his father, my grandfather, mm-hmm. um, was quite... He, he, he formed a company uh, and toured right. uh, theatres in, uh, but all light, strange comedy of the time. Yeah, yeah. And did a, an odd film with a gentleman whose name escapes me at the moment. Oh, yeah. They were called Diggers, and it was an Australian series of films, and, uh-huh. which my grandfather was in, which I know there are sort of clips of them I've seen, which oh, is wow. bizarre. Oh, yes. And then obviously, anyway, my dad, he was very much a singer and dancer as well I as, see. and then had he um he had a, 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 a partnership with um I've now just forgotten his name again <laughs> Dick Bentley oh good sorry well, Moon yeah. Bentley yes ah. so, yes uh, they they formed a, a comedy team together yeah and then he sort of uh, uh he, he he was at the Coliseum in the pajama game right took over for from Max Wall, I think it was huh. then. Yes, Amazing. so he was very much a singing and dancing man. So I guess that meant that, uh, you know, when you were making your choices in life to move into the entertainment world, it was nothing unusual? Not really, no. Were I you encouraged in that? Uh, uh, not desperately mm. encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Not not, not not that much so, because yeah. um, even then it was a difficult mm. profession, mm-hmm. which we both know. Mm, it indeed. can be. You yeah. Know. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, our amazing Chris Dale did a little bit of digging online, and we think we found a little clip of your dad, oh, if you wouldn't mind us showing now. Well, this would be... Oh, Let's have a look at this. Gosh. Oh, yes. 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 Can I get you anything? How extraordinary. I've seen your face somewhere, haven't I? Oh, that's very unlikely, sir. How bizarre. Yes, you used to do a radio show. What was his name? Goodness me! And with yeah. Jeremy Wilkin. Jeremy Wilkin, that's How right. Bizarre. There you go. There well, you go. That is a real I Yeah. Don't remember that. Lovely, obviously. isn't it? Yes. How <laughs> clever of you. So there we are. Well, that's Chris. Like that's that's Chris. Uh, from Undermined Brilliant. in, I think, what year? Do you know, Chris? 65, 1965. 1965. 
five, yes. yes. What memories do you have of, of his career? Yes. Were you kind of aware growing up that um, he was involved in yes, yes, because, filming and so on? Yes, um, he, he was in a long-standing series called Shadow Squad and it became a character called Ginger Smart. Uh-huh which seemed to really take on. <laughs> ah. um, that was a sort of detective series mm. that he did for Granada. And then they did a sort of spin-off for him, playing the same part, as uh, he suddenly was in a, um, an airport. Uh, it was called Skyport. Oh, yes. And um, he worked in, in, in the lounge or whatever it was yeah. in, in an in a airport situation. Right. And I... If I've got my facts right, and this was Granada as well, um, it went out, it became, it went out twice a week, which was the first time, because mm. it was a soap, it mm-hmm. was a sort of soap, yep. uh, that, it, that had been done. Yeah. You know, obviously afterwards Coronation Street, yes. and a lot of people and actors from Coronation Street were in, in it. Oh, right, <laughs> in yes. The Shot in Manchester then, I guess, yes, if it's Granada, that's right. Yes, of course, yeah. So that time. Ah. Yeah. So he, he, he um, yes, he was... For that character, it was extraordinary. He was very much well known mm. at that that point. Mm. Yeah. And do you remember that? Was there a moment, what in your young life, where you made a conscious decision to follow in his and your grandparents' footsteps, or was it more a more gradual process? It, it was a gradual, and it happened that um, arts educational um, was very close to where we lived. Mm. It really was like a block away. Mm. It, was, it was at that time um, sort of in the middle of London. Mm-hmm. And it then moved uh, when I, I... So I joined it. Uh, yeah. It was there. I had to move schools because I'd gone to a little kindergarten around the corner. And then suddenly arts educational was practically on the doorstep. Uh-huh. And knowing that it did... You, you got your education, yes. so, so called. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then you did either ballet or drama, yes. whichever... But that actually moved to 144 Piccadilly, which was at one point, um, I'm not sure going back, uh, it was a residence of the royal family at one oh, time. Oh, wow. And it was on the corner. It's now the Intercontinental Hotel okay, on the yeah. corner there. Because I remember uh, there are pictures of it, um, people did try and save it. Mm. And people moved in and yeah. squatted to try and save it because right. it was a beautiful building. I'm it was sure. wonderful. Yeah. In the rooms where we had ballet classes and things, they yeah. had these beautiful Adam fireplaces oh. and it was a wonderful staircase. Oh. It was a lovely, lovely building. Yeah. There are still a few of them yeah. after it, but um, yeah. that got pulled down. So. And happy times? Yes, very. Really? Oh, very happy yeah. school times. So yes. how long were you there? Oh, months? I was there until Your sort of secondary left. education, Yes, 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 mm. yes, yes. Um, Nigel Havers was there. Uh-huh. Jane Seymour. Right. Joyce Frankenberg to, uh-huh. to us. Yeah. Um, who else? I think before, I think David Hemmings went there oh, as yes, well. Oh, right. And there were quite a few others. Uh, uh, yeah. Beryl Reed. Uh, uh, Ber- not Beryl Reed. Oh, right. <laughs> Beryl Gray. Okay. Who was a famous ballet dancer. She was the sort of... A director of the school at one point, and, and what were your ambitions at that point? Just just to work somehow in the industry, or yes, did you have yes. a specific kind of end point no, in no, mind? No, I, I think I thought dancing to begin with, yeah. um, but no, not just to sort of enter it and find out what happened. Yeah, yeah. I did a I did a few things when I was little, a uh, little girl, because uh, the school did put you up forward for modelling, or and I did a bit of that, and then I did a. Well, I hadn't thought about this for ages. <laughs> I did played Marigold. They did that at uh, Wind in the Willows. Oh, yes. Toad of Toad Hall, whichever. Yeah. And uh, that was a, a regular thing at Christmas oh. at, uh, at that time. And, right. Uh, I, I played Marigold one year um, with, and it was Peter Woodthorpe who played Toad. Right. Who was a rather lovely actor oh. at the Comedy Theatre. Amazing. Yeah, that was quite a little yeah. nice, interesting moment. Yeah. And, so, you know. uh, and how was life when you graduated then? Still as a young actor yes i mean well, was work easy to come uh, by or no i think it was still mm. <laughs> it was iffy and yeah and um, as i say i started off i got this thing with <laughs> liberace uh he, he had a series um and as i said that was at l street studios mm-hmm. he had a series it was eight, uh, 13 episodes i think we did right. Um, and he'd have guests on the show. This was a very wonderful moment to yeah. meet certain people. Uh, but he, it was situated as though he was living. It was in his, his, <laughs> his lounge or whatever. <laughs> right. And he had a maid and a butler. 
and I was the maid. Ah, fantastic. And Richard Wattis was the butler. <laughs> Amazing. And so we'd have little moments with him. And yeah. It was very nice. He, he, he insisted to just call me Georgina, which was rather nice. Yeah. And right. he was charming. Yeah, I just I'm sure. put that in. He really was. Oh, I'm sure. He was not the person, yeah. you know, he was... Um, yeah. He gave a wonderful party at Madame Tussaud, uh, saying, and the invitation said, you know, uh, the King and Queen, Henry VIII, and all the people that were in the room that we were going to have the party in, right. and Georgina. <laughs> and he made a point of inviting everybody from all the people yeah. in the offices right. to it as well, yeah. which was rather nice. Yeah, so right. He was rather a good guy. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. as I say, that then UFO came along. Yes, so okay. I think I, think I thought, this is it. This right, is off we go. <laughs> That's right. Okay, well, uh, since you brought up the subject, let's have a little look at you in action oh, from UFO. Yes, oh golly. <laughs> <laughs> Low tanks, one through six. Yes. Oh, oh gosh. Them, That's so weird. Right. And that lovely man. Running in sight. Prepare to surface. Service stations. <laughs> Maintain visual and radar. God. Watch the surface vessel. I have a radar sighting, bearing 279. Mm. Mm. Oh, God. There we are. Seen I'm sorry to take that, uh, this snap you back into in time. I know, I mean, I've forgotten that. And that was another thing. I mean, that lovely man whose name totally escapes me. Chris? Was the... Was the Gary Myers. Gary Myers? Is that... He, he Wasn't he the, the Cabri... Yeah. Yes, yes, I thought so. Yes, he was lovely. I had these lovely guys. And, and John Kelly, um, I vaguely knew him because, strangely enough, he uh, worked with my agent. He used to pop oh. in, I think, to their office, yeah. and, you know, and so I knew John Kelly, and he was wonderful. He was ah. hysterical. Once we got so... He tripped up or something when he came in through the door being all... Yeah. And that was the end of that. <laughs> it was dreadful, right, yes. and one couldn't <laughs> almost go back to being <laughs> sensible. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so, and lovely Jeremy, Jeremy who, who I yeah. hadn't met, and uh, I mean, since I came, we went to a, um, again a co conference. I think mm. it was with Aisha, mm. Um, mm. and I hadn't met him since then. Yeah, and that was nice. And he yeah, was very nice. I, sort of disappeared for a while, from what I remember, didn't he, Jeremy Wilkin? Yes. Uh, and, Canada, that's right. Oh, and then, did he? Did and then, he? Yes. Yeah. No. Came back for a, a couple of appearances yes, in the UK. A few yes, yes. I must have. That yeah. was one of them. Yeah, I met that's him, right. Which was nice to see him. Yeah. So, uh, I'm loath to ask any more questions for now because I think we should dive into our Space 1999 lunchbox and get some viewers' questions and see what they have to ask. No idea. Because I don't want to tread on their toes. No. So, if you want to reach in and just take <laughs> so uh, take three or four for now, and then we'll do some more There's, next week as well. That's two. Yeah. One more. As you can imagine, you've been a very that popular be, guest. That's that it. Right? That's it. That's yeah, that's take it. all those. That's right. Away, Would you like me to read them to you? Yes. All right, yo. This one then is Jonathan Westall. Okay. He says, What were your thoughts about the skydiver uniform that you wore in UFO when you first saw it? Well, we had a little clip of it there. I thought, Ah, oh, that's interesting, <laughs> but it was all very, <laughs> very uh, covered up and yeah. sensible, but it's. Been a talking point I'm for a while. I'm sure it has. <laughs> yes, I mean we were saying earlier that uh, it looks revealing yes, and, until it, you look closer and you realise yes, actually it reveals very little. There's a great little. deal of padding yeah, there that's right, and that's covering right. up. Yes, quite nice with those because the men were dressed exactly the same. It's yes, quite an interesting little. Exactly, thing. and must have been quite cool, I would think, under yes, the studio that's lights. Very true. <laughs> Can I ask? Did you did you keep any of them at all? Or no? Uh... no I should. What a shame! I should have. <laughs> Maybe it's like keeping scripts. You should, yeah, things one should have. I yeah. know. That's um, right. There's a um, pension right there, isn't there? <laughs> uh, CJ List says I've been watching Up Pompeii recently. Oh, yeah. Do you have any memories of working on that show? So tell us a little about Up Pompeii oh, and what you yes. played there. <clears throat> well, it was no, it was it was great fun. It was wonderful, um, and with lovely Frankie Howard, yeah. he was an interesting guy to work with. He was he was he was great. He was yeah. obviously, and Liz Lana, who luckily I went on tour with quite a few years later. Ah. Uh, 
in a play at, with Bernie Breslau, actually. Oh, wow. Um, and, no, it was... And Kerry Gardner was, was great fun. He was yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, it, it was lovely. And, and Frankie was... was so He was um, wonderful because I was a member of the first series, I think it must have been. He sort of called me over and I thought, oh, what was, yes, <laughs> have I done something wrong? So he said, well, we're coming to the end of the series and... I'm going to have a party, so I do hope you'll be able to oh. come and join us, and it'll be lovely. And that was like, great, yes, good, thank did. you very much. He gave wonderful. I went to a couple of them. Yeah, uh, lovely party. I had a beautiful house in <laughs> Kensington. Yeah, and also, as it happens, when I was on tour, fell in love with Vislana, and we were in Western Supermare because he had a beautiful house oh. just outside uh, Western Supermare, oh. and yeah. he knew we were there, and he said, "Come along after lovely. the show and have a meal." So oh, that's what you very, need. And he was so he was he was lovely. Yeah, character. he really was. Yeah, uh, Anthony Zahetna says life on Moonbase seems terribly serious. Would you have preferred more carry-on one-liners and double entendres in UFO? And can you imagine Sid James starring in an Anderson production? And if well, so, which one? I don't know, but I, um, I don't know. I think I think the um, carry on language wouldn't be <laughs> right for Jerry. <laughs> it was much situation. more serious, wasn't it? Yes, really yes, than carry on. Quite. And yeah. I think actually we were talking about it. I would have thought Sid James, and we were saying about it, it was be a good uh, uh, Parker uh, from Parker. Thunderbirds. Yes, wouldn't he? That was That'd very good. Perfect he casting, would, yes. really. That's, That's right. right. Uh, and finally, for now, then Kevin Gunther says, uh, "Hi, Georgina." Uh, in Carry On Behind, you had a few oh, scenes yes. with future Anderson star Windsor Davis. Yes, of course. You remember that? Yes. Uh, who then went to voice a character in, in Terror Hawks, one yes. of Jerry's shows. Can you remember what he was like and was it f a fun experience working on that film? Yes, it was because, yes, it was. It was really just that one scene that I was in uh -huh. and then there was another one, I think, in the caravan or something. And they all, I don't know. Yeah. But that was uh, because we all, the whole scene, I think we had to really, they did had to do it once and that was it because we all we all stuck to the seats we were watching a a, a film yeah in a club or yeah. something and um i can't think how it all came about yeah. but, uh, I, yes and so i had was one of the friends there right. with windsor yes. who we, and uh, jack douglas was the other right, gentleman yes. and was another lovely lady and we had uh, chats and conversation yeah. and then we all sat down to watch this film and then at the end of it when everybody got up don't ask me why I can't remember the situation yeah. we all carry on behind we all got stuck oh. to the seats okay and that was all quite <laughs> fun see, and yes. Windsor Davis was lovely yeah. yes he was charming guy yeah. very nice indeed you know so uh, and I think it was we, we tend to forget now but the carry on sort of franchise was absolutely huge. huge it was yes. like James Bond movies. Yes. It was like almost like Star Wars. Yes. It was, they so were huge, many, big events. Yes, um, I think it was Elkie Summers who was in that Carry On, mm -hmm. but behind I think right with them all. And um, Carry On Camping, I think as well. You had a, oh, a party. Oh yes, yes. I mean, yes. That was that was great fun. Uh, Did you get to go way, on the campsite? Were you? Uh, oh what? yes. Oh. I mean, there's all the famous stories of yeah. us all standing in mud, pretending it was the summer with all the bikini and Barbara Windsor famous. Yeah scene and yeah. we would just slowly they did put some boards down on some occasions so when we walked around we wouldn't right. <coughs> sink into and the uh, the trees being painted green and all that kind yes of that's right yes i heard about that <laughs> yes that was uh, yes cause that was quite a quite a while back that was one of probably the first film things maybe i yeah. Well, not quite. Early days, though, for yes, sure. Yes, mm. a long time ago. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah. just before we say goodbye for this uh, week, mm. um, we'll have another quick clip. I asked you uh, in a very brief email exchange to give me your first Anderson memory. Oh. So let's have a look at the show that you chose. Oh, yes. Oh, gosh, it's a strange, strange picture. Oh, this is it. This is off. Was there you yes, go. There we yeah. go. Gosh, yes, isn't that sweet? It was lovely. Bertolini. Twizzle. This is the only surviving episode, I think. Oh, really? Oh, really? Goodness me. Have you said the Twiddle Toy? No. Who hasn't? Ooh. Well, that's because there's only one of them. But perhaps sweet. we better begin with the best place for stories. At the beginning. It's really lovely. Isn't it? In a busy street in a busy town stood a toy shop. In its window were toys and dolls of every kind. 
There we are. A very <laughs> brief clip. We're no. not going to get as far as actually seeing Twizzle himself, I'm no, afraid. No, never but, mind. Uh, I can remember him and yeah. his little hands all twizzling that's or something. That's it. Like that. That's it. I mean, charming and sweet. Simpler yes, times, that's really, what I suppose. I mean. yeah. yeah, like the, the wooden tops. And that's right. Whatever there was. Yeah, yeah. That's and a charm that seems yes, to be missing from today's a bit, yes. kids' TV, it's maybe. Once upon a time, I don't yeah. think things start like that though, no. anymore. But, no, yeah. they were still very much fairy tales, weren't they? Yes, gentle. Yeah, that's right. That's rather sweet. Yeah, great. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us this week. Will you come again next week and tell us a bit more about your illustrious career? Oh, gosh, yes. I hope so. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. That's Particularly great. if we get you another glass of wine. No, yeah. that's all do it. <laughs> but for now, thank you very much, Georgina oh, Moon. Thank you. Georgina Moon. How rude of you to be on your phone. Oh, sorry. Georgina Moon was here. She's great. For the first part of her interview. Um, I do love her. It's okay, oh, she'll be back next week. Yeah, well, she did that Doctor Who with me, didn't she? Uh, indeed so, which we'll yeah. be talking about next time, I think. Oh. Yeah, that's right. What was it called? The Bayamoth, I think, wasn't it? It was, Colin yeah. Yeah, nice. Good stuff. Uh, now, look, this is, it cannot have escaped your notice, our 300th episode of the podcast. Uh, one of our f- uh, former guests have got in touch, the lovely Mark Braxton from the Radio Times, tweeted me to say, Hello, Richard, just a message for the 300th. Uh, many congratulations, Richard, Jamie and Chris and co for the happiest podcast available. Oh, uh, 300 is an amazing achievement. It is it true. Is. There are always new and interesting insights into Jerry's shows and the banterous tone puts a smile on my face. Banterous tone. <laughs> he, nice. Now he should be a future guest, shouldn't he? Banterous tone. <laughs> yeah, I was going to uh, say, Mark's already been on. Yes, yes, it was a privilege, he says, to be a guest. Thanks for keeping the love going, Mark Bagpuss Braxton. Nice. Isn't Thank that you, Mark. Nice. Lovely. Thank you so much, Mark. Yes, a, a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah. A few pods back. I can't remember what it was. A, a while, while ago. ago. Uh, uh, now, can I just stop you there? Oh. Uh, because obviously, uh, Julina Moon, yes. uh, oh, yes. Lieutenant Hal, she was in, in the sub, right? Yes, she was. So I've got a um, s- sort of um, marine based 300 fact for oh, you. Really? Yes. Okay, go on. In zoology, yes. there are approximately 300 species of turtle across the globe inhabiting a variety of ecosystems from oceans to deserts. Now, that one I do like. Not sure if it's worth that, but uh, yeah, that was, that was quite I nice. Think it was. Um, now, let's hear from some people who have some really interesting things to say, shall we? <laughs> Rude. Fine. This is the voice of the Podsterons. The voice of the Podsterons. Lovely. Um, oh, hang on. Yes. The first one that I've seen oh, yeah. is from someone who was our first writer in it. <gasps> and I seem to recall that you did a rather. Fantastic job. Yes. I was going to say something rude then. Careful. A rather phenomenal job Thank you. Uh, impersonating his um, Australian accent. accent. So obviously you should read this first one from Dear Hugh oh, Paul, I'm not sir. doing the accent again. Oh, come on, get your Les Patterson out. <sighs> OK. Hi, all. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Sending an email through instead of a letter this time. There was a question in my letter that was read out and I'd like to answer. The question was, does he sound like this? Referencing the Australian accent. To answer your question, Richard... No, I do not. Oh. He says. But I love the attempt. It made me chuckle in laughter. I reckon we need a new segment of the podcast of just accents. This is Hugh Porter, of course, who says, Also, as a request, could Richard try an impression of Ringo Starr? <laughs> and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Right. Anyhow, till the next one, kind regards, Hugh Porter from Adelaide, Australia. So, Ringo Starr. How's your Ringo Starr is the question today. <clears throat> Thomas pulled into the station. How's that? Is that okay? Is that all right? I go. think that was great. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. God, isn't he brilliant? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I've got one from, from Paul Carey. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, regarding a recent fab fact detailing the similarities between Star Trek and Space 1999. Yes. They also, beyond those facts, yes. shared an episode title, The Immunity Syndrome. Oh. The 1999 version also guest starred actor Christopher Held, uh, who guest starred in Star Trek original series episode The Return of the Archons Archons I don't even know Okay wow Nice Very good so Well th- done Paul More facts Thank yeah, you Paul Good spot uh, Hi Jamie and Richard My mum has recently been watching the repeats of Prisoner Cell Block H It's the wrong on, podcast on, in that case uh, Yes <laughs> on, on That's TV 2 Not even on That's TV 1 yeah. Every time I saw the character Meg Jackson played by Elspeth Ballantyne she reminded me of someone and I soon came to the conclusion that she was a dead ringer of little Joe McLean from Joe 90 ah. I think it might be the pudding bowl haircut and the pouty bottom lip 
Oh, that's it. Perfect. <laughs> uh, can anyone else think of any unlikely lookalikes of characters from the Anderson universe? Keep up the good work. It was great meeting you both at London Film and Comic Con Winter in 2022. Kevin Larkin. Cheers, Kevin. Nice to meet you too, Kevin. Yeah, mm. that was a little while ago now. Mm, it was, yeah. I mean, there are lots of Joe Nighties, aren't there? Basically, anyone with glasses on TV. It's yes. It's a bit previous uh, guest of the podcast, David Quantic, was Quite. referred to as Joe Nighty, yep. wasn't he? There you go. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Guy Knowles. Oh, yes. Writes as follows. Yes. Hello, Jamie, Richard and Chris. Hi. I'm not sure if you read my previous email, but here is another question regarding the Jerry Anderson shows. Okay. Did we read the previous one? I, I can't, can't remember. remember. We do read out a lot of emails about the Jerry Anderson shows. Whether we did or not, let's do yes. it anyway. Uh, Guy writes, do the Super Mario Nation shows take place in the same universe or do they have separate timelines isolated from each other? Hmm. This is a rather interesting question because whenever I read about character biographies like Gordon Tracy, it mentions the World Aquanaut Security Patrol. Um, the theory I take uh, is that they do exist across uh, the shows. Mm -hmm. So there is Wasp and Stingray, Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet. Uh, also, if they do coexist, why would International Rescue allow people to die to get misteronized <laughs> so that Spectrum True. stays in a job? Well, they can't cover the whole planet well, if they do. Yeah. Um, Mm. I kind of like to think the Anderson shows have separate timelines and do not take place in the same universe. Oh. Uh, what are the thoughts that people have on the matter? Interesting. Well, a, a world that's co-inhabited by um, Super Mario Nation characters, some with large heads mm. and some with small, mm. uh, causes some problems you straight could, away. You could, put a, you could put a line in about, you know, like they did in Star Trek about the, uh, about the Klingons. We, we don't talk about that or whatever Wolf said about the We don't talk about design. that, yeah. You know, uh, that would be it. That'd yeah, be it. and then also... Stingray, all of the uh, the undersea aliens, alien races, or the mm, undersea races, mm. uh, where where do they go? Mm. Was it ever your dad's intention that they should be set I, in? A... I don't think they. No, were. he I mean, just went from show to show. TV Twenty One, they were doing it yeah. absolutely in the comics. They, yeah. they were doing that really early days and, and doing it in quite an exciting way. Mm. Um, but I think for the shows, certainly Dad's view was quite siloed. Yes, so yes. I'm going to say siloed. Yes, I like Unless it. Unless you read the comics and then yeah. whatever. Not siloed. But you can I mean, Guy, if you prefer them to be siloed then let's say they're siloed. Well, I've How's never that? heard the word siloed. So, so I've never heard it before and now I've heard it like five times Weird. in the last It's minute. because I was in meetings yesterday where siloed was said quite a few times and now I've adopted it. As you a... see, I'm thinking silo and I'm thinking of some great big storage tank full of um, grain. slurry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or grain. <laughs> but that's not what you mean, of course. No. No. Anyway, let's move on. Thanks, Guy, for your possibly <laughs> yes. repeated email. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, do get in touch. Podcast at jerryanderson.com. We'll read out your email next time. But it's time. Well, it's not actually his 300th, is it? It's not Chris's it's 300th. It's our 300th podcast, but only yeah. his 299th randomizer? Uh, yes, I think it might be. Yes, it is. Okay, so mm -hmm. let me give you another 300 fact. Oh, joy. Except... Oh. That this one is Anderson related. Oh, come on then! Exactly, and it sort of leads into the randomizer, although not directly. All right. If you go from Twizzle, yes, counting up the number of episodes produced by Dad in succession, what do you think the three hundredth episode that he produced was? Oh, from Twizzle. I think we're talking. I think we're talking maybe six series later. Oh, okay. Good, good estimation, possibly. Twizzle. Bear in mind that only one series of Torchy, not both. I'm going to go... I'm going to go Thunderbirds. Are you? Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't actually really done the <laughs> oh, uh, work no! on this, um, but I think it's actually Mindbender from UFO. Is it that late? Possibly. Uh, Positrons, if you want to work it out and correct me, I'd be happy to be corrected. But I'm going to say it's Mindbender. All right, uh, fair enough. And that's a, a sort of micro fab 300 fact. Over to you, Chris. Good luck, Chris. So, Georgina, thank you yes. for coming all the way to see us here in Slough today. Um, I hear you'd like to press the button on the randomizer today, and I think, as it's our 300th episode, you Good. probably should, yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's the 300th edition of the Jerry Anderson podcast. Yes. For reasons too boring to go into, and I shouldn't have mentioned it here anyway, it's not the 300th randomizer until next week. Putting that aside, whenever you're ready, yes. would you like to press the button? I will. Yes. Shall I do it now? Yes, please. Thank you. Do I nearly well knocked done. it off the thing. That's fine, yeah. So is there any particular series you're hoping to see come up today? Well, should I say, I think I should say, I UFO should, should be. Yeah. yeah. See, we haven't got UFO, unfortunately, today. What we've got is Space Precinct, and it's the oh. episode Protect and Survive. Oh! 
And there is someone in this room who worked on Space Precinct. Oh, really? I think I can see him over there. Hovering he the might room. just be uh, itching to join us, I, I think. Wonder. So, uh, yes, Georgina, thank you very much. Not at all. Been the uh, the very first episode of the series that I ever saw. So this uh, was the first one that went out on BBC Two. That's right. Yeah. But second in production order oh, after yeah, Double Duty. That's right. I don't know what would have been the first one to air in the States. I want to say it might be this as well. Yeah, I think so. I think it was just the decision was taken that this was a more accessible episode than, yeah. than Double Duty. And I suppose the actors had settled into it a bit more, so it looked a little less unsure of what they were yes. doing. I suppose, I don't know how many they would have had to pick from, I guess the first four maybe, it's... Yeah, I think so, yeah. that's right, yeah. Yeah, so each episode took, took uh, apart from the first, which took three weeks, I think, each episode took two weeks to shoot. Mm -hmm. There you are. Go! <laughs> and of course that is now a, a GIF, or GIF yeah. as some people it say, is. Yeah. Uh, being used on, yeah. on Twitter. Mostly oh. used by me, you have to say. Yes, yes. That does look so nice. Beautiful. Yeah, it does look nice. Mm. So what would have been the first completed uh, episode of this you ever saw? First episode I ever saw? Was there any, any like, a, a premiere or, or something for all of you guys? No, I something? don't think so. Uh, I think it probably would have been Double Duty. I think they were sort of uh, completed in order. Yeah. No, Mr. Brogans. But I do remember as the series went on, we'd quite happily let ourselves into the editor's room and oh, yeah. take a umatic cassette tape and watch each episode as it was completed. Oh, why not? Now, this is a holdover from uh, the Space Police Reloaded pilot. The ah. poor actor playing Haldane had a, a space hot dog yeah. in that. Yeah, um, it's a nice touch. Yeah. But they come when I tell you. There's something that's quite incongruous about having... Shut uh, up. earthly things, like a hot dog dispenser in a police car, yeah. that we more readily associate with New York cops yes. on an alien planet. Which conversely, actually, may be the fault to some degree of the series in that mm. these could just be stories set in New York. Yeah. Until the, the cab opens and out comes some aliens. Yes. Oh, the most annoying mannerisms of any man I've ever known. Ah, so these are the Zyronites. Who I think make a return. Yes, in, in Hate Street, which I, I want to say was if not the first space briefing I did on here, definitely one of the uh, first. Yeah. Fall the courier. Nice that they would occasionally remember there were more aliens around yes. than just the Creons and Tunnels. Yes. You'd think they would have got more use out of them, in yeah. fact. Yeah. And we have Burke Quok in the back. Um, would you have met him during this? I yeah, didn't no meet to. No, um, I didn't meet Burke Quok. No. Uh, who had worked though with John Glenn previously, I think. All right. Uh, John Glenn, who directed this episode, had a great contacts book. And uh, yeah. Pretty much all his episodes were stuffed with guest actors that he had worked with before. Burkhoff, yeah. Marion Darbo, oh, Jack yes. Headley. We've got to fix on four illegal immigrants. Let's hit it. Hey. Also, I think this is in the um, Police Reloaded pilot. Yes, I think that the equivalent of Fredo does it here. OK. To, um, what's her name? Uh, Chloe Annette. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the only time I think that uh, Simone's actually shown wearing the hat. Yeah. It's jettisoned pretty early on. Yeah. And it's good, because there's no movie on this flight. And having said uh, that this was the first one I saw, obviously there is no introductory episode. But watching it as a kid, I never sort of, like, that never felt off to me. It was just, yeah. okay, we're here, we're doing this. Yeah. It's an easy concept to get into, isn't yeah. it? Whereas if it was, say, Captain Scarlet, you might have some questions about what yeah. is going on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So presumably there is someone in the vehicle bay on the station house making sure that the tomato sauce dispenser is <laughs> maintained at all times. It's topped up. Yes. That's right. You take it back. Well, I always get them back. And we're, are we coming up on the bit here where yeah. Ted Shackelford was injured? That's right. In the shootout that's about to that's happen. That's right. Yeah. And so in the next episode, or in this episode, he's seen with a yeah, plaster on his cheek. Yeah, he was rushed to A&E, I think. Oh, dear. Did he 
take it well? Or, uh, from know? what I remember, he took it well. Yeah. I don't seem to remember there being any ramifications. Good. And are we about to see a... a, a... Oh, <laughs> I was going to say a cat, but I suspect that's a stuffed cat. <laughs> <Yeah. on> my... <laughs> Just chuck it. Yeah. It's fine. Oh. Now, this is quite effective, these mm. sides of meat. And yeah. Mud. Strange alien meat. Although from the alien's point of view, it's a very odd thing to do. I, I, I'm assuming that these human cops know nothing about aliens. I'm going to yeah. hide among the meat. Uh-huh. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's nice and effective. You know. Slick don't like being left. Slick got scared. Yeah, Slick can be more than scared if he does that again. Yes, a slightly unsympathetic attitude yes. towards uh, Slick. And I suppose um, Bert was a guest star who would have been more familiar to... British viewers than American ones, yeah. necessarily. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Unless they were Pink Panther fans. That's right. Ah, ah that's it. There you see. Yeah. Uh, obviously, that isn't the blood from the actual cut. Mm. So this is when he had recovered. They reshot this and used the fact that he had a scar there ah. to dress it with fake blood. And it's there for the rest of the series, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. 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 The space precinct scar. That's right. Well, we're all scarred by space precinct. <laughs> oh yes, some more than others. <laughs> That's clever. Hmm. So the alien takes advantage of the fact that uh, he has a very strange physiognomy yes. and disguises himself as a side of meat. Oh, they got, got him. him. Milks it. Whoever's in that costume. Yeah, that'd be Glenn Marks or someone. Oh. I would think. Difficult to know, of course. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, any time. Are you okay? Is that it? No, no quipping or I love this job. Possibly yeah, it might yeah. be about to come on. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, yeah. so a bit of casual yeah. racism. Yes. Yeah. 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 Not to make you sick. That funny. You like eating it in cruiser? <laughs> nice. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, but up to this point, it still could be a, a show set on Earth. There's, yeah. And here we are. Yeah, there we go. In space. Totally different. Who were your contacts? We have told you. Andy Dawson. Not dubbed. That's right. I don't accept that. Who set up the deal? Mary Woodvine trying very, yeah, tricky manoeuvre there, oh, where yes. you can't see very much. I noticed that in a Fireball XL5 the other week, Steve Zodiac was actually pouring a cup of tea with real liquid in the teapot. I suspect that was easier for do, to do with a puppet than yes. it was for Mary to do it uh, in a mask. Or him. Ah, ah yes. Oliver Cotton. Yes. Who had previously been in Space 1999. Uh, as a caveman. OK. <laughs> and Took's coming down with a, a touch of the old Zyron fever. They're telling the truth. You think? Think? I thought you could read cyanide minds. Oh, are you all right? And of course, this is before you had a, a regular doctor on the yeah, on the, the show. So a couple of aspirin and a run around the football yeah. pitch. <laughs> One more time. Who were your contacts? I mean, I think it's about time for some comic relief, don't you? Yes, and who better? So this will be the, the audience's first introduction to Orin and Beazel. Yes. From the series. Oh, Beazel, they've been sold out for weeks. I mean, at first sight, they certainly look odd. Mm -hmm. Not particularly attractive. No, and quite, quite similar. Yes, which was a big issue. Yes. Forget it, we're lousy at computers. But do I remember rightly, you mentioned in your book, that shot of you watering the plant. Yes, yeah, that's right. Uh, John Glenn's idea, mm -hmm. just to bring a little bit of um, personality. Yeah, uh, but it, I think we return to it later on in another of John's episodes. Could be Illegal, yeah. I think. Ah, Slobo, full body scan. Yeah, we don't have a medical team yet. Yeah, let's get the robot to do it. <laughs> and here he comes from his cubby hole. Yeah, remember this is urgent, urgent medical <laughs> care needed. Any time now, <laughs> when you're there ready. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. Minor readings indicate Zyron fever, Captain. Wow. 
survive. Thanks a lot. What are you going to do about it? Police are in full quarantine. Same goes for the Zionites. And immunize every officer in this station. I want Gershom stopped before he spreads Zion fever across half the planet. Oh, we do have some medics. Oh, yes. When, well, last cut. We don't have any dialogue, though. This stuff still looks lovely, though. It does. Strange design for a space station, though. It never really worked out where the station house sets yeah. were meant to be. Because it, it does look almost like a crayon head. Yeah. Like and it tapers a bit too quickly. Where, yeah. where are all these rooms? Yes. All those endless corridors. Mm. They have a gym at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Meant to disable it. Some disabling? You hit a vital organ. This is how I supposed to know his brain was in his arm. And one that I remember this clip being on things like Live and Kicking at the time. This was often used as a promotion for the yeah. series, that little clip. Yeah, well, it's a great setup, isn't it? Mm. It's the sort of whole fish out of water yeah. line. Which didn't really last that far into the, the series yeah. for Brogan and Hell. Yeah. Speaking of people who aren't going to last long. <gasps> oh, no. What did I ever do to you, huh? Nothing, that what? One of my best couriers is dead, Slick. Not me. Slick have nothing to do with that. You were seen with an officer. I think there was a sense of relief in this episode when John Glenn settled into being a, a regular director, that he was very much a safe pair of hands because the first episode under Colin Buxley had drifted slightly. Yeah. Um, I know the producers weren't very happy with it at all. But now this is a much more assured episode, I think. Mm. Uh, for sure. Uh, anything you say, Mr. Garshaw. And I suppose John Glenn adds a, a touch of sort of credibility, mm -hmm. which I guess would be important when yep. you're dealing with the investors and the schedules and so on. Yeah. Even though his career was pretty much over at that point. Yeah. You know, uh, which is a terrible thing to say. He was only in his 50s. Yeah. But but his most prolific work and most, you know, uh, well-known work was, was behind him, really. Mm. Which is a shame because those those five Bond films, yeah, uh, that's my like favourite block of, yeah. of films. Yeah, but you know, I think one criticism that could be levelled against this series is that because Jerry had such a again another uh, contact book full of. Uh, uh, of interesting but older names. Mm -hmm. We had the likes of Sylvia, Sylvia Narazzano, we had the likes of Sidney Hayes, yeah. John Glenn, Peter Dove, all men of a certain age. Mm -hmm. I think maybe if you were trying to launch uh, a new interesting sci-fi series today, you might go with younger, edgier directors yeah. perhaps who might have other ideas. And it seems to me that the writers were certainly younger and yeah. some, uh, some of them were working on the, the 90s Star Trek shows. Yes. There are a brief glimpse of our, our main guest alien for the week, wonderful Armand Loyster. Yes. <laughs> and lovely model work with this. Yeah, it's seamless, isn't it, with the live action, really? Yeah. I guess it helps that it's at, at night. Um, yeah. Oh, and I think there, just briefly, was that um, delivery bike ah. that became the, the police <laughs> okay. bike. Yeah. All right. Possibly. There we go. Goes. And that was so good, they used it in the opening sequence. Yes. And like many explosions in Demeter City, no one bothers to no. check on it. No one's <laughs> it even noticed. Happens, yeah. yes. But My favourite is the one at Deadline. The whole dirigible comes down and the whole city goes up. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, Armand Loyster has seen everything. Yeah, and how interesting. I mean, that's such a, a full head mask. Yeah. And yet Rob still manages to kind of exude, uh, you know, nervousness and yeah. anxiety about what Absolutely. he's witnessed. Very clever. Rob Thurtle in the, in the head. Yes, because the, the making of documentary has a whole thing of him being fitted for that mask, right. particularly that character. Yeah. And he tells a story about how He's playing that slam ball. The crew hadn't really figured out what it meant to be in a mask or a yeah. bodysuit, not just a mask, but an entire bodysuit like that. And he suffered a lot. Yeah, and almost you can see blacked that out. And, the making of as well. Yeah. He takes the mask off and looks absolutely done yeah. in. What happened to your face? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> That's what we're telling the uh, insurance anyway. <laughs> nice one, Dad. I don't know, the family gets a lot of stick, but if you're going to have a family. Surprise. 
Oh, what, yeah. what are you going to do? I'd, I'd say, nice at the very least, they are, they're perfectly cast. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's yeah. not the actor's fault that they're yes. being asked to, to deliver some awful lines. Yes. Yeah. You want to give me your plate? I don't want any either. It's fine. Then why isn't Daddy having any? I'm trying to cut down on fats and stuff. I mean, she's now in well, her 40s. Veggies, so yeah, oh Matt? my goodness. Sure, I'll <laughs> yeah. try and say Once. I'm glad somebody's going to eat it. Ah, oh, good old you, uh, score. Sure, <laughs> I was, I was trying to remember the name there. I knew it was in there, yeah. <laughs> Mom, Dad! That thing, it screamed when I cut it. Don't be silly, veggies can't scream. It did. Eat. Yeah, I think with the family, it's like, have them in the story if there's a point to them being in the story, but having a family scene every week. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that's right. this kind so of funny. sort of stops the action a bit. Yes. Look. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat. I, in fact, I would go so far as to say it's orbital. Ooh. Far out. <laughs> Wow, how high tech and futuristic. <laughs> yes. Downtown. Uh oh. Uh, there's Excuse me. The, word. the D yeah, word. Awesome store in Ripley Mall. Ripley I don't want Mall. you down there, man. What? You heard what I said. Dad, I'm 14. I know what I'm doing. You'll do what I tell you. Yeah, so you can quit that slam ball competition because he won't let you go. Will you, Daddy? I don't know. I mean, how do they get down to the planet's surface? to Ripley Mall. Is there like a cab or a taxi or a bus service? Isn't there a mention of a, a school bus a in one right. episode? So I guess, yeah, there could be buses. Yeah. Leave no, him. I know what it's like down there. It's, it's a whole new world. He means what he says. Yeah. Maybe if you spend a little time with him. Yeah, I know. He's great. It's a good performance from Ted Chappelford. Yeah. He's a great leading man, I think. And Nancy Paul as well. Yeah. I, I think she does great. I just often don't like the character, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately. Sorry, what do you got? Your pal Slick. Now, I don't like the way that sort of uh, grill effect on the wall just became a screen, rather yeah. than being a screen okay. anyway. Come on in. Patrick. Honey, it's important. I gotta go. And also with this being an oddity in production order, as the first episode shown, Zill is just sat there with no explanation of <laughs> yeah. what that is. Yeah. Doesn't do anything. It's just, oh, there's some kind of thing. Yes. Sergeant Fredo's bringing Gershom in now. We have a preliminary at six tomorrow evening. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Ah. Ahem. Caught. Yes. And that doesn't look too far removed from a, a game controller That's that we true. have today. What do you two think you're doing? A case of computer fraud, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, vital data is encoded in this disk. We're trying to crack it, sir. Oh. I see. Well, keep up the good work, then. Uh, we'll do our best, sir. As I said, we have a hearing tomorrow at six. It was a nice... You were getting some nice smile... Smile, I think. ...out of that. Yeah. yeah. That's what we call it. Yeah. So I think that was Gary Martin doing Beazle's voice. Yeah. Originally, it was Lou Hirsch. Right. Of course, Lou then became Romek, yeah. so they had to revoice Beazle again. <laughs> it's all a bit of a mess. Yeah. Tom Watt looking slightly uncomfortable in his costume and mask. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Romek is by far the better character. But it would have been easy, it, it would have been interesting to see Beazle with the Romek voice. Yeah. Maybe there'd be something there. Maybe. But, but also that we had the physical difference, Orin and Romek, which, yeah. you know, works very well. And I guess as well they would have had a chance to learn from any mistakes in the early episodes when yeah. building the Romek mask. Yeah. Now, maybe I could... Recommend a course in remedial marksmanship. Ah, the beginning of the uh, Haldane and Castle will they, won't they, yes. no they won't relationship. Wow. Or will they? Mm. And does anybody really care? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. But again, I, I like the, the performances of both of them. It's, yeah. uh, that sometimes you do want to see a shove Haldane in an airlock and yeah. push the button. That's right. So the story, if it's to be believed, is that Jerry took a lot of 10 by 8 photographs of people he had in mind to play Haldane into the office, showed all the women in the office and said, which one do you fancy? Okay. And do we uh, know who any of these women were? No. No? It's only a story from Jerry. I've ah. never heard it corroborated by, by anyone else.
going to... I, I do, hang on. Yeah. What, what number pod are we? Mm. Three, oh, uh, 300. No. Who is it? <laughs> if that's... Roman and Officer Haldane. No, we're, we're, we're 300. So it's a couple of weeks away yet. Yeah. Oh, that would have been perfect. Yes. If only you thought. They walked past door 300 <laughs> to get to 302. That's there probably it there. Yeah. If that... Oh, come on. Do it. Do it. No, no we're not going to do it. That nice little be... use of the multicom there. So yeah. Open the door. That's, uh... And also from Loyster's view. Gentlemen. From the bathroom there. Thank you is. for coming. It's such a relief. And that's a Super oh, Mario Nation voice oh, artist, voice. David Healy, oh, Captain you. Scarlet, Joe, Secret uh, Service, <laughs> UFO. Ah. And he was on the Space well, Police as well. Ah, okay. So I do remember these uh, lines of dialogue were played out in the studio and they were timed to the movements of the mask. Ah. Was that normal? Uh, it was for these larger heads, such as Morgo and so Oh, on. yes. Morgo, I would say, is Please less successful. I hear you have instructions not to leave my side. Huh? Well, it's not just the eyes and the mouth, it's that the nose was moving there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot in there, I think. I mean, that must have been very expensive. Mm. Uh oh. Well, only last week in the first episode, yes, Double Duty, I was in there. there. Yes. We don't seem to be doing very well, do we? No. Her pulse is still unstable, and she's not responding to endotherapy. Oh, wait a minute. Now it's going bloopy bloop. I'm afraid she's dead. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. With Zyron fever, who knows? I wonder who's in that tall oh, mask. And hope. Um, it's a mask I recognise from other episodes. But, and I think this episode establishes the general space precinct rule that if anything bad is going to happen, it's going to happen to Turk right. right before anyone else. Fair enough. Yeah, we haven't really had enough chance to establish that relationship, though, have we? No. To make it feel like anyone should care. Yeah, oh, they're partners? Okay, well, yeah. how do we know this? She gave her a hat earlier. Yeah. Come on, back up. May I remind you, Sergeant, that by law you must release my client unless you can produce a witness within 24 hours. Who's got a witness? You'll meet him in court tomorrow. Court? You should never have gone to court. My client is an honest, law-abiding citizen. I rec vaguely recognise that actor from somewhere. Oh? But the little oh, yeah. guy, but mm. I can't Pro think what from. I'm sure he's been in stuff. Yeah, Poirot's and Yeah. Oh! Oh, no. Aye, aye. My apologies. Charming. I blame the parents. Yeah, they should have drowned him at birth. <laughs> hey, slow-mo! You've got a lot of folders on your desk there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Not much work to show for it. It's hardly a paperless office, is it? No. Oh, I feel good, feel good. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Hmm. Oh, fly acting. <sighs> Probably wrong side here. Yeah. Sorry, I must have dozed off. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh. Officer broke. Oh, no, of course. It's integral to the plot, isn't yeah. it? We're having a hell of a game. <laughs> and that, that Loyster costume looks like it must have been quite heavy as well. Yeah. Not just hot. Did oh, yeah. Steal? Probably a swamp fly. A swamp fly? I'm in the city? And, you know, he, he would have been in that all day. Yeah. Oh, they're harmless. Yeah, you maybe. Ah, there he is. Presumably seeing through the oh, nose or yeah, I think so. around there. Yeah. He's mine. Yeah, okay, for the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I do like the, the way they establish this guy as an alien, just yes. by little disgusting things. Yes. But he's still a nice guy. Yeah, that's right. We've got to get on with our uh, other case. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love this set, I have to say. It did feel like home. You know, we were yeah. in there two or three days every every episode. We hit level 12, and it's hello, Slambo. Yeah, a nice double layer set. Was um, was Podley's office really there? Yeah. You could get in there. Yeah, absolutely quite right. Yeah, up on the gantry, yeah. The charred remains of a human body were discovered in a car park last night. Thailand Gershom, self described entrepreneur, has been arrested in connection with the incident. Hmm. Now over to Nantor with the latest slam ball results. Ah, oh, slam ball. Slam now it's boys. time for. I need to visit the flusher. Great. 
But I thought... Yes. Weren't you told never to leave my side? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> About that. <laughs> yes. There's a whole deleted scene there. <laughs> So yeah, this was a little enclosed part of the set that would also be used for the canteen. I think it was a briefing room at some point. Oh, yeah. However, they wanted to dress it. <sighs> that took it. <sighs> Show off. Yeah, quite similar to Moonbase Base Alpha in that sense. Fairly economical. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Who? Who? Who <laughs> took? We just got hey. here. Yeah. 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 We don't have any lines. Yeah. To the left, you tin-headed dummy! She's come round! Come on, slow-mo! Oh, oh, we just don't care, do we? No. Excuse me, will you both are? Ah. Now, watch the next. Yes. Tom and I had a little thing of trying to make these creatures more alien, so we had this idea of maybe they were sort of reptilian, and oh, maybe right. their necks no. were kind of a bit more, I don't know, could move independently. Didn't last. No. She's come around, like I just said. Great, you ought to let Brogan and Hal Dane know. They're at Hotel Novana, Suite 302. I have... Now, are we going to see the cell guard on the other side of the door listening to all this? <laughs> oh, no, it's Fredo, I think, he's sitting out there for some reason. But he has an earpiece, doesn't he? That's yes. very serious. There you go. Pushing it further in. Uh-huh. <clears throat> what are those plastic things in that shop, Fredo? On the left-hand side, oh, yes. what is all that? Uh, cable ties, cable I think. Cable ties, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Ah, presumably to bind the prisoners. Yeah, possibly, yeah. 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 But it's true, there's more paper in this future police office yes. than there is in a police office today. Yeah, or than there was in 1999. Yes. Uh, no problem. And the two cops? He does look familiar. Can't stand. Loud and quick. Now in his 70s. Oh, yes. Ugh. And this is always fun in sci-fi shows, watching actors gulp, gulp, struggling gulp. With, with future food. <laughs> no, thank you. How about Brogan? I think Brogan's busy. Is he going to put it in? Uh, you're going to hide it behind the napkin yeah. and then we'll cut away. And then... So nom, nom, nom. Oh, delicious. Uh, not till the hearing. Come on, Sal, I have to be there. Hi, Daddy. Hi, honey. How's it going? Okay, I suppose. Where's your brother? Downtown. Here it comes. There's the magic word. Downtown. 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 Down
Uh, Ken Whitfield, who played a few aliens, also appeared as himself a couple of times. His various bodyguards. Mm -hmm. so I always find a bit disturbing with some of the crayons, so they have that pointy chin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No other doors have numbers. <laughs> this is. Yeah, this is a scene they, they show being filmed on the, the making of Doctor Who. Okay. And in the, the full wide shot, you see Rob really struggles to stand up oh, in that costume. Right, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Looks like this just ain't your day. Whoa. Oh, no. Now what happens? Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Back to the domestic drama. Oh, yes. And a new hairdo. Why don't you come over here and give me a kiss? Dad's folded. It's fun downtown. Yeah, well, uh, it's yes. dangerous. <laughs> it's just like the 80s. Yes. Yeah. Very odd. The orbits of planet and space. He'll have potato prints on his face yeah. next. <laughs> Matt. I didn't really like the uh, sound of the uh, the wooden floor as he ran up the steps no. to the kitchen. No. Matt, please, stay away from downtown. Hollow wooden steps. There are some sounds I really like in the show. I think the sound of the blasters. Yeah. There's, there's something nice and beefy about yeah. that sound. No cops, no witnesses, no trial. Easy. <laughs> Dad! That's it. Nice. Man. Perfect. Patrick, what the hell is going now on? Now let's traumatise the family with a shot of a dead body. <laughs> a fine, bye! <laughs> Turn the screen off, Matt. Turn the screen off. No, Matt, don't look at the body. <laughs> you are never, ever going downtown again. Whoa. If only oh. everything about this show was as good as the music. Yeah. Oh, it's some lovely music. And it's such a great main theme. There's, there's so many variations yeah. you can get on it. I mean, I should even imagine that Rob isn't fully dressed in Royster's yeah. suit in the back seat of that car. That would have been far too impractical. Mm -hmm. He might even have been in his shorts. Could be, yeah. Uh, wouldn't blame him. Yeah. Rogan's wife saw it all on the screen, sir. She says they left the hotel. They must be on their way. Damn! Find them! Right here. SPA. Hey, Loyster, when this is over, just think what you can tell your kids. Yes. D don't ever help the police. Now, I'm not sure if David was the voice of um, Idris Elba in um, ah. D Double Duty. I've seen him credited mm. for it sometimes. Okay. I don't think the voice is quite the same. Mm. But obviously, with this being the next episode, it might have been him. Yeah. Have time again. Time to head to court, Mr. Gershom. This is a complete waste of time. I intend to file an official complaint. Oh, yeah, they are going to time up those. I don't remember them using those yes. in other episodes. I seem to remember metal cars. Yes, that's right. And it's not especially high tech. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some plastic. Yeah. Come on, Brogan. Can't you get any more out of this bucket? Uh, clip our stabilizers. 150 is the best we can do. The um, gun we saw earlier. Oh yes, so we know what's coming. Don't slick, yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> Whatever it is. That seemed to be a line that Haldane uttered uh, quite a bit. This seemed to recall. Well, whatever it is, it's armed. Yeah. Rob's doing some fantastic panic acting yeah. in the background there, waiting for it to explode. Trying to shake it off the bonnet. Yeah. Lots of camera tilting going on here. 
I'm not sure where this is supposed to be, some kind of refinery. Or... Yeah. Brogan, we're locked onto that tower. Yeah, game's over. Lower my window. What? Lower it. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Lucky you can get his head out. Yeah. Come on, Come on. It's a nice payoff after what yeah. we saw earlier. CGI and a real prop yeah, tongue. Yeah, that's right. Also nice as well, I suppose, for an introductory episode. If you, if you haven't got a, a proper story to introduce the series, do a story where the human cops find out that, okay, this alien may be a bit gross, but he's a good guy and he helps yeah. us out in the end. Yeah. Unlike this guy who has no CGI tongue. <laughs> No. One, three, four. Poor old Moister. Moister, Moister, come on. Ah, uh, Moister, my friend, that was great tongue work. I beg your pardon. Yes. Any tips for me, Loister? <laughs> Not now, Loister. Get in the mask. Get in the mask. This is a point where I, I, kind of, I feel you kind of sense that, that this is just a rubber mask. I'm I right. think he kind of goes completely sort of dead at one point. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If they were still, they were dead. That's, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. Oh, and the, in the blue unif uh, blue jacket there. Yes. That's the guy from the end of Predator and Prey yes. who comes to collect the Zwellin. Yes, so I met a couple of times. He was also in a, a couple of Star Wars movies, I think. He was and in Indiana Goldeneye. Jones and, yeah. Hmm? He was in Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Yeah. I can't remember in, uh, Judy Dench's first scene in Goldeneye. Right. Minder as well, I think I've seen him in that, yeah. Another extra of the period. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't do it. You've got to do it. <laughs> Waiting patiently. Ah. Is it 13 o'clock on that clock there? <laughs> yeah. Captain Podley. Tiny court is now in session. <laughs> Loister to the stand. See if you can find out what's going on. It's all going wrong. Your Honor. Yes. If I might ask. Oh, now the chap behind on the left. Oh, yeah. Another extra. Uh, was also Rob Youngblood's stand in for lighting purposes. I can't remember his name. Evidence within the required period. And this judge was in, uh, I think, Fire Within as well. Oh, yeah. I'm also wondering about that lady on the left. Um, she's got this strange fringe of blue, oh. and the rest of her hair is absolutely black. Oh, okay. We're running out of time here. Uh, negative. I can't believe this. Tylen Gershom is just going to walk free because. Another extra with a hat? Produce our star witness. Uh, hold it. Something's just come in. I do there, not. on the left. Oh, Mr. Oh, again. No, oh, too quick. She's in that corner on the left-hand yeah. side. <laughs> oh, and she was also on the right there, behind the lawyer guy. <laughs> ah, She's getting that. around. The court will rise. Your Honour, our witness Armand Loister is receiving emergency medical treatment. I object. Oh, yes, yeah, I see how she is. Delaying tactic. However... If oh, that's the different angle on the camera. ...to make a statement via satellite. Ah, the court would be most willing, Officer Carson. A very sonorous voice the judge has there. A very friendly court. Yes. Please point them out. Please point them out from the screen. What if it wasn't standing on that side of the screen? Yeah. He was the one! Oh. Good old Brister. Really? And this is quite satisfying, although it shouldn't be. Oh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Someone has to be punched. It may as well be that guy. <laughs> yeah. Not a great part for Oliver Cotton, really. We don't really yeah. learn a great deal about his motives or what kind of man he is or his no. backstory, do we? Not really. Villain of the week. I think you know the news news reporter told us he was bad, and we just have to take yeah. it at that. Yeah. Yeah. And here we get the. Uh, oh, oh, we've got several things to wrap up here. Yes. Yeah, the, the shooting. Why, well, sure. Why don't you just mosey on up your little leg and plink away at that little tart? Oh, I want to say again, this is a scene that was in Space Precinct Reloaded, mm -hmm. possibly. I just conceded. I don't see how I could possibly think less of you than I already do. Hey, your Took's going to make a full recovery. Took. Yes, she will. Great. So, Ed? 
Yeah. What? what? <laughs> How do but, I get from yeah, here hey? to where I want to be? <laughs> now your friend's going to be all right. I suppose a shag is the question. <laughs> oh dear, yes. Maybe by the end of the series. <laughs> we'll see. Gotcha. Yeah. Ah, here we go. Ah, oh, the payoff. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I hear we nailed Gershom, sir. Indeed we did. Yeah, you two were a great help in that. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Just doing what we do best. Hey. How's that case of yours doing? Sir? The uh, computer fraud case. The one you've been working on for the last two days. What have you got for me? Oh, well, uh, I like as well that Podley uh, yeah, obviously knew what they were doing in advance. Yeah. 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 And happily goes along with it. Stuff. Pity. Stuff. I was hoping for tickets for the slam ball final. You see also the glistening on the lips there. They used to put sort of uh, Vaseline oil on the lips or a gel on the lips to oh, make right. them wetter. Did they sort of black out any teeth? Yes. Yeah. Well, we had false teeth. Ah. There. Uh, actually, uh, there's someone else who would appreciate them a great deal more than me. It sounds like Jerome certainly isn't, that, that isn't interfering with his, his yeah. dialogue delivery. Yeah, sure. Don't. Final scene. You see, it all ties up neatly. Yeah. Slam ball tickets. Oh. Pretty sure we've got those in a folder somewhere at home. Ooh, could be worth something. Yeah. Yes. Do you have much in the way of paperwork or anything? Uh, I think we've got some uh, Demeter City notes, banknotes somewhere. Ah. I am so glad you're home. Mm. So I've got a flyer of uh, Vinny Artak campaign that should Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, very nice to have you join me uh, for the uh, David Shaw Park. Ah, right. For yes. the first episode of, not the first episode, uh, Late Tinkler. Okay. Uh, for Protect and Survive, yes. How does that feel watching that back again after so many years? Well, it does feel like yesterday. Yeah. We have so many guests come on this show who say, I don't remember a thing about the show. I, was in, yes. I almost remember scene by scene, line by line, everything yeah. I did on this, on this program. It's very odd. I suspect you're in the minority there. Yeah. Uh, but think, how wonderful. Yeah, exactly. It was such a formative time for me. And uh, to have this visual record of it is quite extraordinary. Yeah. The fact that it does still Charlotte, survive, there, yeah. there we are, yeah. in such lovely quality now as well. Oh, fantastic lovely quality, yes. Yes, if you haven't checked out Space Precinct on ITVX, um, do, please do so. Yes. We highly recommend it. 1994, my goodness. Here we are. Ah, well, this is very nice. We must do it again sometime. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you for coming. SPA. I didn't actually invite you, by the way. You just sort of turned up. Right. You can go. I'll get back to the table, yeah. shall I? Yeah. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. What a treat for you. Oh, yeah, a bit of space precinct. Well, you've really messed your hair up. Oh, there. God, and the hat and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's Protect and Survive as well. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a, a real sort of uh, lovely centre <laughs> parting going on here. Actually, do you know what, what you remind me of? Yeah. Uh, it's Britney Spears in the uh, yeah, music get, video for Toxic. I get that a lot. Yeah. I really do. Lots yeah. of people say that. Actually, that should be the cover, the thumbnail for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Side by side. Uh, protect and Survive. Yeah, I mean, I said it all in the uh, in the randomizer there, but... Uh... So there's nothing else to say. Oh, fair enough. Is that okay. what you're saying? All right, well, join us next week. Bye. No. Oh, oh I see. Sorry. Because I've got one, one more. Oh. <laughs> What more fascinating Anderson-related 300 fact for you? Yeah. Well, that... Go on, no, I'm just rearranging. Just, yeah, OK. That's better than like a unicorn. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so my Anderson 300 fact... Actually, this is courtesy of Chris Dale, because I think he was so disappointed by my half-arsed... Absolutely. Uh, 300 yeah, episodes Yeah, he didn't even have the answer. Thing. I didn't really. Uh, is that, of course, 300 is an important number in the world of space 1999. Right. Because that is the number of crew members of Alpha. Is it? 300 of them? It sort of hovers around 300 Comes as, goes, as right reference. But Were there any births? Yes. Yeah. Well, they're sort of Alpha, the Alpha child, right? The, the yeah, but well, I mean, were there any other... Well, yeah. did, I don't think we didn't see the ins and outs of Alpha in that way. Oh, OK. So. Right. right. Is my... my yeah, so, is a, a, new, a new arrival, does that count? Yeah, I think so, yeah. But she can, she's also any number of other creatures as well, so she ups the, the number. Right. The, the quotient there, doesn't I love how we've kind of evolved this fact into a kind of amorphous blob of nothingness. Uh, would you like a few more 300s to round off? Get this a few quick. Celebrate. You know, people want to go now. Epi 
All right. Uh, ooh. Oh, no, that's not very good. Uh, 300 yes. is a perfect score in 10-pin bowling. It's a perfect game where a player achieves 12 strikes in a row. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? And in the human body, Richard, oh, yes. at birth, we have over 300 bones, which then fuse to 206 by adulthood. What if I put the pins up? And uh, can I give you one more, possibly? Oh, sure, but, yeah. Because you like the species one, the uh, the zoology one. Yes. In mammalian zoology. I think it's green bin this week. Is it mammalian? I don't think or it is. is. It green anyway, there are approximately 300 species of octopus. Great. There you go. I mean... Right, are we finished? Hang on. <clears throat> Goodbye. Bye. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. Right, that's it, that's it. Well, what about the post... What? Pa- post bants? Well, I mean, I'm just saying that's it. That's, that's the end of the 300th, isn't it? So I see. Oh, I that see. That can go now. That can go, that can go. I feel like we didn't... We, I don't, we didn't do a very good no one even job mentioned of these celebrating. Stars. Oh, no, they were lovely, Oops. the decorations. Really? Sorry, I've just spoilt... Uh... Oh, God, I've done it again. It's all going a bit of some pear shape. There we are. Right, right. It's good. Fine. Well, well that, uh, that that's went well, didn't climax. it? climax. Mm-hmm. I didn't realise they were all under the hats. Shame, isn't it? That was an Anderson Entertainment production.